You know, theologians these days <clears throat> emphasize to a large degree that it's not going to harm us to have a very simplistic, almost um, fundamentalistic view of the whole history of our salvation and how it's going to be accomplished through Jesus Christ. Uh, however, <clears throat> you start thinking about some things like, what about the resurrection? I was told that at the end of time, all the people who died would rise. Everybody, of course, said, well, what about the ones who were blown to smithereens and all that sort of thing? You know, so we, we figured that they'd all come back together. <laughs> then the nuns told us there would be this huge throng of everybody who ever lived. You know, can you imagine? And then each one by one would go up to the throne. And just like a movie screen, everything they ever did or didn't do, you know, good stuff, bad stuff, would show up on that screen. And God would then split the good from over here and the bad over there. And the most horrible thought was, everybody's going to know what I did. Of course, at you know, eight years old, you know, you're really worried, but you're more worried than maybe later on. And then what happened then is, uh, don't worry, they said, because everybody will be so worried about their turn that they won't be paying attention to your story. This is all that was told to me uh, as a kind of an example of simplistic view of our of our uh, beliefs. Um, Christ, of course, always kind of narrowed it down, like, love God and your neighbor, all the law and the prophets are in there, right? In our, let's say, existence in this world, there's an amazing amount of connectedness. And if things are connected, it kind of begins to be so connected and interwoven that it's kind of like a, like a vegetable soup. You know, it's kind of hard to divide the good from the bad. It's kind of hard to uh, always say, oh, it was such a regrettable thing that this happened, or that the person did this. You know, even though, you know, some, uh, let's say, criminal behavior might have inspired a member of the family who didn't have a father because he was doing time 
for being involved in drugs to be inspired to become a, an officer of the law or an addiction counselor. You know, in other words, it's hard for us to really say, well, some good came from that. Where was God in that? And is God saying, go to hell, but it's a real good thing that this happened as a result. So I'm, of course, very influenced by a very liberal churchwoman, Sister Rita. But she's always saying how it's really very difficult for us. Things are very interconnected, not only in that sense, good and bad, that dualism is kind of hard to really uh, defend anymore, but also uh, how we interrelate and how nature interrelates with us. For example, carbon dioxide, bad, right? We bought, if we got in a room and, uh, you know, closed all, passed up the cracks, as the song says, and then all of a sudden we just breathe and breathe and breathe until we changed that out. Every bit of oxygen came out of that through our lungs and went out as carbon dioxide. <clears throat> well, one of the reasons people are kind of worried about uh, taking uh, and, you know, decimating the rainforests is because the plants love carbon dioxide, right? right. They breathe it. Guess what they put out? Oxygen. oxygen. And so I kind of think of stuff like that how things really interrelate, even in the physical world. I think also within a person's body, it's amazing, you know? That old heart would really not do very well, <laughs> right? If it pumped everything and pumped that blood, and that blood was supposed to come from the bottom of your feet all the way up, through your lungs and into the heart, and it would be pumping, it would be going up and down and up and down and up and down. There's valves in your veins. You know that thing you go ah! with it in, 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 when you were a kid and you sucked it up and it wouldn't, wouldn't because these two flaps of rubber were there? You know, one of those great things you bring home and your mom wishes you, they never invented it. <laughs> right? Okay. But that's what those valves are like in your veins. They're like that. And, then, and they go up and then when the blood tries to go back down, it stays and keeps going. There's a, an amazing amount of, of order and interconnectedness between... Um, all things of life. It's interesting that the way there, there, therefore, that God entered our history was through one of the most important units of connectedness we have as human beings. And that is family. You might have thought there could have been a lot easier way, a lot, lot less trouble for Jesus, right? Um, if this, uh, if this person came just like we expect him to come simplistically at the end of the time and boom 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 and everybody would lay down in front of him and said there's no there'll be no differences there wouldn't be any distinction between uh, uh, slave and free and Jew and Gentile and Protestant and Catholic and uh, all of these things everybody just go oh. but somehow in this plan that this divine God this divine uh, person or persons had was to enter this world in the form of family. Lost of father, right? Mary, Jesus. Mm -hmm. and we celebrate that family today. Now, talk about interconnectedness. What do you think Joseph and Mary could ever have contributed <laughs> to the God-man's character? However, time he was about 12 years old and he acted just like a 12 year old, you remember that? <laughs> I'm going to be hearing that gospel pretty soon. What happened? Okay. All right now. I had to be about my father's business. Get going here. And he was subject to the... And in the context of family, the holy family which we celebrate today, he grew in wisdom and strength and there was something contributed by that all, all that human relationship between himself and his parents that wasn't just totally instilled by God. It was, again, connectedness, even between God and humanity. So we'd celebrate today family. And if you even think about it, uh, I don't know if you've ever been through the, the routine of the Trinity, you know, when they explain the Trinity. You know how they explain the Trinity? They can't. They can't explain the Trinity. But one of the ways they do is, you know, that the Father saw a perfect image of himself. That was the Son. 
What are those words? There's no gender in God. Everybody gets upset about it. But somehow words of, of gender are used to, to give an idea that this trinity can be really in some senses considered as the perfectly connected family. Father, son, that's a family term, right? I mean, some people say creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Kind of dry, if you ask me. Father, son, spirit, even mother, son, spirit would do the trick for me because then it would say so much more about the fact that this love between the first two persons mentioned in the Trinity generates new life or a new person from eternity, and that's the Holy Spirit. Don't try to figure it out. I never did. They give you courses in Trinitarian theology. I don't even remember who taught it. So the idea is that somehow, even the nature of God is not without the image of family, of a community of persons, still one God. We are shot through with divinity, and we are also shot through with humanity, similar in a sense to our Savior. And we are on this planet somehow to become an integral part of the plan of salvation. So, not so much as here we're waiting around trying to do good, and if we do, uh, if we do well enough and we cooperate God's grace, we'll go to heaven. And then, uh, then when we raise from the dead, we'll go through all this uh, uh, good, bad uh, uh, stuff. I think that Sister Rita is so wise when she said, everything in the universe is connected. And the thing, the mortar that connects us is the divine nature which is present in all of humanity. And we, as Catholic Christians, are particularly privileged to have a special, a fuller view of this plan. And it's maybe put to us in terms that all people of all generations can better understand. And it's not going to be harmful if we kind of go back to the idea of, well, I'd rather talk about the, the movie screen. But really, in reality, we are encouraged to live family. And in living family, we will do God's will. And all the little tiny details are less important. They melt away. The other thing is with this view, <laughs> somebody just hit somebody else. Don't worry. <laughs> with this view, we can begin to realize the dignity of one another and the fact that we fail is not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Because we don't know the whole picture. Today, uh, we think about Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. We already know one time when he was pulled up like this. We think of this wonderful season of Christmas where we have Christmas bells and the smell of pines and pine needles and gifts and children going to Iowa, Santa coming. And it just is this supposedly warm feeling that eventually as you get older and older and older, it goes away. But I think it's the beginning of a story that is full of goodness and caring and loving, full of treachery already. Now, poor Joseph's running around because somebody wants to kill Jesus. And ultimately, that's what happens. And we can see that even the divine being, person, who came to be among us, it wasn't a cake one. It wasn't a cake so when we look at our own failures and we look at our own shortcomings and really those offenses that have been done to us, maybe we need to put that in the whole soup and realize that part of God's will is that we remain connected. And our ultimate goal is incorporation into this family life of God. We always used to say in the seminary, the ultimate goal of the Christian life is incorporation into the Trinitarian life. What the heck does that mean? Well, what it means to me is it's just a statement that says we're not pantheists. We have our own will. But we want to open our will to become more and more caring, loving, outgoing to one another in that sense. Always be aware of God's presence no matter what we're doing. And give yourself a break and know that we're part of a plan that is far beyond our imagination. If you are ready to swallow that, <laughs> please rise.
and profess your faith. <laughs>